Good as again. Always good to be with you and to share some of the Word of God um, with you, brethren. Um, it's always a pleasure to do this. We know that um, from time to time we run some of our messages on YouTube. Um, we do get feedback, people um, watch it, uh, they would send it to some of their friends and we really appreciate that and thank the people that are helping us uh, in promoting the Word of God. The intent is that this whole world here, the Gospel of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, uh, coming soon. Uh, Jesus said that this Gospel must be preached to all the world uh, before the end come and we're doing what we can. <clears throat> we know the generations, um, if the Lord didn't come first, uh, the generations uh, coming after us will um, continue to do this and probably find um, easier way and better methods to promote this gospel. Um, but as we do this, I want to remind you that there are rules that we must follow. And so I titled this Following the Rules. <clears throat> and as we look through the Word of God to see what the rules are and, and those that have uh, followed the rules, uh, we, we will see that they not only left a good example for us, but uh, they taught us uh, through their uh, obedience. Uh, the reward that comes after uh, and following the rules. Um, we'll also see and talk a little bit about those who did not uh, follow the rules. Okay? Um, let us start with Jesus. Why not? Um, when Jesus was sent into the world, <clears throat> there were specific rules in place in order for him to accomplish his Father's will. One of the things that Jesus had to do was get baptized. Uh, Jesus did get baptized. John the Baptist baptized Jesus. Uh, thereafter, uh, we see Jesus uh, preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand, uh, warning and, and just preparing uh, a people uh, for the soon coming kingdom. But Jesus, uh, he did that. <clears throat> Jesus also had to build a church. Um, uh, he did that. Jesus, um, he, he, he called men as he uh, preached the kingdom of heaven. We know he called um, disciples and he built his church. Uh, Jesus also had to give his life uh, for the church and for this world. These are things Jesus had to do and to accomplish these he must have followed the rules. He did follow the rules. He did follow all the things that God wanted him to do. Even when it was hard, uh, Jesus asked for help. We remember him praying in the garden, Gethsemane, saying, Father, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So Jesus was not uh, establishing his own way or his own rules. Uh, he was going on rules that his father set in place. Um, he was very obedient to his father's will. It could not uh, be accomplished until he uh, did all of it uh, as the father wanted him to do. In summary, Jesus said this in John 17 and verse 4. <clears throat> John 17 verse 4. Jesus said, I have glorified thee on the earth, 
I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. See, Jesus is saying, uh, this is before he gave his life, knowing that he was about to give his life for this world. He said, I have finished the work which thou, the Father, gave him to do. So, Jesus clearly followed through on all the things that the Father wanted him to do. And in the end, he said, I have done this, Father. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work. And in John, if you read through that chapter, Jesus was saying to his Father that he did not lose any that he gave him but the son of perdition. So, Jesus did uh, a marvelous work and we know what the end result was. Paul, in his writing, uh, he summarized the work of Jesus this way. Turn to me to Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> and many of us that have studied Jesus, uh, we are well aware of uh, all the things that he did. Um, whether it's uh, healing the sick, um, you know, feeding the multitude, uh, just in everything that he did, the zeal that he had for his father's house, the predictions that he made. Um, but the way Paul summarized it, Philippians chapter 2, we'll read from verse 5. Let this man be in you with uh, was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not a robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that <clears throat> at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Jesus was obedient in all things according to the scriptures. And I, I like the way Paul summarized this. And the encouragement. <clears throat> Paul is saying to us that we should take on the mind of Christ. He did not um, uplift himself. He did not um, see himself for more than what he was. Uh, he was obedient. Uh, he took upon him the form of a servant, uh, meaning that he listened. He did exactly what the true master asked him to do. And the true master here is God. Jesus was obedient, setting a good example for us that we should be obedient as, the father, as Jesus himself was and should not become puffed up at any time because of certain things we can do or certain things we have accomplished in life. But Jesus was obedient. You may have heard people say uh, that they do not like organized religion or churches. I'm sure you heard that. Well, did not Jesus organize his church saying the gates of hell will not prevail against it? Wasn't Jesus obedient in this as well? You know, this is one of the things Jesus had to do to build his church, organize his church. The way he did that, when he called 12, whom he named apostles, and 70. And he said that, and we read that in Matthew chapter 16, he said, the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Would you tell him when he returned? I mean, you didn't think it was necessary to um, be with an organized church, 
Um, you think in, being independent was the way to go, or is the way to go? <clears throat> Organize your own church. Is Jesus' church not good enough? He built his church. He was obedient to the Father. And the way Jesus did this was fast and pray before he called the twelve. So he had guidance from the Father. The Father was the ultimate truth. And we see <coughs> the apostles after the fall of Judas, just before Pentecost, doing the same thing. They fasted and prayed because they knew that the church needed to have the twelve, the way Jesus organized it. <coughs> the devil will not prevail. Jesus must find his church when he comes back. Those that follow the rules will be with Christ. Those that follow the rules will be part of the twelve apostles. We do not expect them to live for a thousand years. No prime minister or president or queen or king live forever. But the system lives on. The law lives on. And men continue to fill vacancies. And so it is with God's church. We, we see Jesus <clears throat> and how he followed, how he built his church. And whether you like organized church as this church is, with the 12 apostles and the 70, we don't have a choice. You know, um, this is how God wants it. And this is how it will be. Um, if one dies, as they did then, so we do now. Um, lot is cast. Uh, of course, names are put in qualified um, individuals to fill vacancies. And because this church must prevail. It went through difficult times in history, but never surrendered uh, to the devil. I want to take a look at one that is called Lucifer, or the devil, or Satan, that was supper, with many titles uh, given to him. Um, he did not follow the rules that God had in place. As a consequence of his action, he was cast out of heaven. And so Isaiah summarized him this way. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 14. <coughs> To see how Isaiah summarized uh, the devil's fall. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nation? Thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. So this is a summary of Lucifer. That was his name who became the devil, uh, the serpent, um, and many other titles. Um, he was lifted up in pride. Ezekiel 28 talks about him and his beauty and the privileges that he had. He challenged God, you know. And in the process, he, he took some of the angels with him, a third of the angels with him. Uh, he really challenged God. He, he really thought he can do it better. Um, that old saying, you can do it, I can do it too, or I can do it better. Um, he really wanted to um, fight and, 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 you know, just take over by force. Isn't that amazing? Uh, he wanted to fight his own maker. Um, uh, God who holds all things in his hands. Uh, there is no force of power or energy that exists with a God. Uh, the devil existed because of God. 
uh, the devil weren't willing to follow the rules. And we see Jesus um, uh, giving his life uh, for man. And so what happened is, as a result, the devil was stripped from, uh, of all the privileges that he had, and he was cast out of heaven. Unfortunately, as he did in heaven, so did he also on earth. You see, when he was cast into the earth, um, what he did was planted a seed of independence in the mind of Adam and Eve. And it worked. You see, he was able to deceive a third of the angels in heaven with him. And here he is cast up into the earth. And now he is able to deceive Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. It did work. You see, Eve, Adam and Eve listened to what the devil had to say. They joined in a conversation that was not good for them. And sometimes an innocent conversation can result in regrets, you know. Um, and we all know that. And I'm, I'm sure Adam and Eve regretted the day they had that conversation. They did. The devil um, succeeded in what he, um, was, he set out to do, to deceive. <coughs> uh, turn with me to Genesis, Genesis chapter 2. I want to read exactly what God said to Adam and Eve, and then the conversation um, that went on between Eve and the devil. Genesis 2, 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil <clears throat> thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. The day they eat of it, they shall surely die. So what happened? Uh, let's go to chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was most subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall he touch it, lest he die. The serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make more the wise, she took off the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Adam and Eve, um, they fell for it, didn't they? It seems, you know, sometimes things might seem so boring, um, you know, you really have to eat that same fruit all the time, you know, or can we just have the, the tree got so many different fruits, you know, we eat one here, each one there. Um, you know, people in this world might tell you how boring your life might be or is because you, we do not partake in certain things. Um, and you can see um, that conversation, and the devil was so clever. Um, he's very, very wise. Wiser than, the, than Daniel, the scripture tells us, um, saying to this, this woman, and you shall not surely die. And she fell for it. The, the truth is, Adam and Eve knew the rules. They knew it. Uh, we heard sayings, well, they were innocent. Well, how innocent? You know, they were much smarter than us, don't forget that. 
Some of them, Daniel's name still exists because Adam named them. You know where the, the, the name woman come from that we still use today? It's not a modern thing. Adam named the, his companion woman. And he was clever enough to say because she came from man, right? Because she's from me, let us make that connection. So, did they know the rules? They did. Like so many today, they read the rules, understands it, and then breaks it. It's not true. I, I get that line came from a song. I really, really like it, you know. And that's the only slide I know in that song. The only slide, the beginning of that song. We read the rules and then break them. It's incredible. Every time I hear the music, I gotta hear that line again. Um, Adam and Eve knew the rules because Eve rehearsed it to the serpent. This is what God said. The tree which is in the midst of the garden, we should not eat, it, eat of it. And then um, the devil was being so clever, saying, you know, you really don't have to follow that rule. Um, God knows that you'll be like him. He don't want anybody else to be like him. Look at me, you know. Um, try, eat it, and we'll be able to do exactly as he did. Does that's the seed of deception he planted in heaven when he drew a third of the angels. And when men say to you, or you hear people say to you that you don't have to follow certain rules in the scriptures, you don't have to take things so serious. Well, you better take it serious when you hear that. Those are seeds of deception that is planted. That's the kind of deception the devil plants in our minds. It worked, and it continued to work today. Hence, Jesus had to come and give his life to save us, to deliver us from that fall. He was obedient in all things. He surrendered his life, so we can have this life. And we know Adam and Eve went on blaming one another for the fall, for the disobedience. They paid the penalty. Uh, we continue to live through it. But we don't have to stay there, you know. Um, Jesus came to secure us a life in his kingdom. So we can choose to follow the rules or not to follow the rules. You know, Joshua had that kind of a counseling for Israel. Um, turn with me to Joshua 24. Joshua 24, one of the, one of the last counseling he gave Israel before he parted this world in death. 24 verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. See, my brethren, I hope you see what I see. <clears throat> see, Israel came from a very bad situation. They created a bad situation for themselves after coming out of that situation. That generation that came from Egypt, 
They did not enter the promised land, save Joshua and Caleb. Settling into the land, they adapted to the culture of the land. The culture of the people. They worship and serve the gods. Joshua is saying to them, choose. Remember Elijah asked in the presence of Ahab and the people and the contest between the, the prophets of Baal and himself. He said, choose who you will serve. Choose you this day. Joshua is saying to Israel, choose. Don't be on the fence. They knew the rules. They knew who God was. Israel knew the commandments of God. But they chose rather the populous way. Um, the, the way that anything goes. You know, you don't have to take anything serious. Just have a form of godliness. And it was okay. That's what the gods of this world offers. That's the gods of the Amorites. That's what they offers, which were no gods. Gods that they made with their own hands. But they do have, uh, in some way, a king over them. It's the devil. And works in, in these uh, people to go after images and so forth. Israel responded by saying, uh, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord and serve other gods. Well, that's exactly what they did, you know. They were doing it. They did not want to acknowledge the fact that they were serving other gods. Secretly, they hoped that nobody would know and see. But Joshua see, so I know that Israel weren't going the way God wanted them to go. They were breaking the rules. Judges. See what they did. And judges, I'll read this verse. Um, 17 verse 6. In those days there were, was no king in Israel, and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. See, after the death of Joshua, the children of Israel did what was pleasing to them. Anything goes. But you know, Moses did warn the children of Israel about this before. That very generation uh, that entered the promised land. Let me read this verse quickly to you. In Deuteronomy 12 and verse 8. He said, Ye shall not do after all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. So they had a practice of wanting to do their own things. Moses did warn them to Follow the rules. Keep the commandments of God. There's only one God. One Lord that they should serve. But uh, many years after, we're reading in Judges that every man did what was right in their own eyes. Um, in society, no, you know, nothing operates that way. There are laws that governs everything that we do. There are bylaws. If you buy a property, if you buy a car, uh, you have you sign on to responsibilities. If you buy a property, you know you have to clean your, your sidewalk, and you can be held accountable or be charged if someone get hurt crossing your sidewalk if you did not clean it. You don't own it; it's not yours. But you sign into that, right? Uh, there are rules in place for our children. They must attend school. They must. And if they don't, the government could be on our backs. Why is it only spiritual things people don't want rules to be in place? Why is that? Hmm? It's a good question to ask. The Word of God do give us these answers. I mean, we know the devil um, is walking in the minds of people. And God forbid that he walks in here. Uh, he did walk in Israel, but 
You know, is it possible that the devil can in, um, get in amongst us and plant seed of deception? It is. But messages like these and reminders like these can help us back on the right path, right? Um, <coughs> so, what happened with after <coughs> this this problem in Israel after the death of Joshua <coughs> is that God raised up judges uh, to judge Israel, and for many years. Um, over 150 years, Israel had not seen any miracles that they read about. They, they read about the pattern of the water, uh, the, the river turning into blood, um, the firstborn being killed in Egypt, and the Passover, the pattern of the water into the promised land in Jordan. <coughs> All the great things they read about and heard about, but for over a hundred years they had not experienced any miracles, nor had they heard the voice of God. I heard a question recently right here. How is it that we're not hearing, we do not hear God the way He did, or how is it He's not speaking to us the way He did in the past? And I remember saying, yes, he still is speaking to us through his son. That's the voice we have to listen to today. Jesus set certain rules in place. We, if we want to enter the kingdom of God, we have to abide by those rules. Yes, we would love to hear the voice. Israel for many years, until one day, turn with me to Judges 6. Judges 6. God appeared to this young man. <coughs> Judges 6 verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was an oath for, that pertained unto Joash the Abyssalite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, the mighty man of valor. Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where are all the miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. See, Gideon is looking back. For a long time, they haven't and, or did not see nor heard. And now the angel of the Lord is coming and saying, I will deliver you from the hand of the Midianite. God will use you, Gideon, to do this. Verse 14, the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in the, thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianite. Have I not sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Amen. See, um, it, isn't it incredible? Um, all of a sudden, Gideon, he has seen himself, and he is poor, he's, he's not able. Um, I, I find it incredible when you look, look at the judges that God chose, um, how it really does illustrate what, um, if I can find that verse again. Um, we read this verse in, in Zechariah 6. It illustrates what Zechariah says. Um, Zechariah 4, verse 6. 
This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And the key here is, by my spirit. See? Um, Gideon really looked upon his um, weakness. You really look at the judges that God chose, and you can see that it was God working in these men. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. So, um, Gideon did have clear instructions from God, as we can see. Um, and in, in spite of the clear um, promise of strength, Gideon still made excuses. He saw his limitations and weaknesses. He wasn't able to see uh, how God can work through him. And this is often our problems. You know, <clears throat> uh, we, we would remind God when God calls us to do his work, remind him of our limitation, implying basically that he really do not know us. Um, as, and when we look at our uh, limitations, sometimes we really think we need help. And we can probably look for help, and many times we find help in the wrong places. And even hurts us at times. Um, uh, instead of building us, uh, sometimes they burn us down. Uh, they hurt us. Uh, because we're not willing to give it all over to God and let God walk through us. Um, and so Gideon really said to God, you know my family, we're poor. Um, who is going to listen to me, basically? Who am I? Um, but God did promise to go with him. Let's continue reading for study six. God, Gideon here really put um, God to the test. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my, my hand, as thou hast said, Behold, I will put a fleece of wool on the floor, and if the dew be on it, be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. And it was so. For he rose up early on the morrow and trussed the fleece together, and wringed the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, Let not an anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry upon the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. See, brethren, God accepted a challenge uh, from Gideon. He did. He did exactly what and Gideon wanted him to do. Um, you know, he wanted to prove that God would deliver Israel by his hands. God did so. The question is, will God, will Gideon follow the rules? And do as God asked him to do? Or will he devise his own way? Let us find out in Judges 7. Let's read a couple of verses there. Judges 7. And Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Harod, so that the hosts of the Midian were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand. Lest Israel bond themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, 
and there remain 10,000. So we're talking about 32,000 people who seems to want to go to battle with Gideon. And the Lord is saying, they're too much. And he asked Gideon to do this thing. Just whisper in the ears of the people, Gideon did. The Lord said to him, and following what the people are, you have too many. And so God gave them, um, said to him, give them this challenge, right? Uh, bring them down to the water, and I will try them for thee there. I will try them for thee there. See? Um, and it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. That's interesting because friends could be involved, you know? Close companions, close relationship, family. So he brought the people to the water, the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lapped the water with the tongue as a dog, him shall thou set by himself. And likewise, everyone that bowed the need to drink. And the number of them that lapped put their hands to their mouth were 300 men. The rest of them bowed the need to drink. The Lord said unto Gideon, By these 300 men that lap would I save you and deliver the Midianite into thy hand. And let all the other people Go every man onto his place. See? Gideon did follow the rules. He did. Um, just tough going at the beginning. Uh, Gideon did not want to just listen to any voice or anyone that speak to him. He proved the voice he was hearing. You know, if you would do this, prove yourself by allowing him to do this miracle for me first. And the Lord did it. Um, the Midianites were defeated. 300 men. 300 men. Not by strategy or intelligence of Israel. It's might or power, but by the Lord. As Zechariah tells us. Not by might. Not by power. But by the Spirit, says the Lord. This was God's battle. Gideon was the tool through whom God used to fight this. For some doubters of God's words, this does not make sense at all. You know? Uh, of course, Jesus did say, if you're going to battle, you got to check to see if you're strong enough to fight your opponent. But that's if you go to battle. God doesn't have to check that. If God battles through us, we don't have to worry about anything. God will fight for us. All we have to do is obey the rules and follow them. Not read them, understand them, and then break them. This is how Paul illustrates us. You know, I just want to read this for us before um, I go to Paul. Um, Jeremiah um, 32. For the doubters of God's word, I really want to hit this for us here. Jeremiah 32. Verse 17, and this is a good verse to remember. I'll take two verses there. Verse 17 and verse 27. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. Is there anything, is, uh, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Verse 27. This is the Lord speaking. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Isn't that incredible? Jeremiah is saying, acknowledging that there is nothing too hard for God. And God is confirming, saying that He is the God of all flesh, of heaven and earth. Is there anything too hard? The Midianites were defeated. Today, um, God can walk through us. God can do the same through us. God can use us to do His work the same way He did with Gideon. And while we have not seen or heard His voice, He was never tangible to us at any time. But we know we're touched by Him. 
and by His Spirit. And we draw to Him because of the Spirit in us. And that calling that, you know, he's, he, he reached out to us because we were reaching out for Him. We were all looking for a better life. The better life is in Him. There's no need to look back anymore. Um, if we stay the straight path and obedient to Him, um, we don't have to look on, on our weaknesses. Uh, Paul is saying in this way in 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 25, um, because in 1, verse, 1 Corinthians 1 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men, for we see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confirm the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confirm the things that are mighty, the base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh shall glory in his presence. See, God knows, God knows that these are they that will follow the rules. Does not mean that God do not work with intelligent people, smart people. Does, does not mean that God do not want us to use our intelligence, our brain. But if you puffed up, if you really think you know it all, if you won't listen, if you won't, won't follow the rules, God will reject you. God will not walk with you. And so those that will follow the rules, <coughs> oh, we see the description here. You know, the base things of the world and things that are despised hath God chosen to bring to naught the things that are. So, if you think you um, have it all and you do it and you won't listen, Jesus built his church and you think you don't have to listen to the apostles and you know you just see them as men, that's fine. Um, if you want to be an independent, be an independent. Um, but that's, I can tell you, you will not be connected to Christ because he has a body. It's not operating by himself. Um, you see, this, that's, that's what this world suggests to us. Um, um, in order to make it in this world, we have to be harsh, we have to be tough, unbending. These things are not bad, but, um, but if it contradicts the rules that God has in place, then it won't work. We don't want to be harsh at any time, but you know, but we don't want to compromise the word of God either. Uh, so don't, we don't want to bend uh, under pressure. Uh, we want to be strong. Um, it reminds me of David and Goliath. You know, um, you know, Goliath uh, basically laughed at David. Um, he mocked him and scorned him. Remember what Goliath said? He said, "Am I a dog?" You know, is this the best you can come up with? Um, and David's response was, well, you come in the name of your God. And I, I acknowledge that you are, you're a warrior. You know, you're a big, strong man. You know, look at you, you got all your buckles and shields. And look at me, I got my little short pants and my slingshot, let's go. Uh, I come in the name of my God. David followed the rules. Saul, did not follow the rules. You see, um, even if he was anointed king by Samuel, and God asked Samuel to anoint this man to be king, he broke the rules, and therefore God rejected him as king. Did he know the rules? Yes, he did. As I said before, we read the rules, we understand it, and then break it. And you know, sometimes we can make it work for us, you know. Um, there are many who believe that, you know, we got to love our neighbors as ourselves. Don't steal, don't come into adultery, uh, we shouldn't lie. Uh, but when it comes to the Sabbath, uh, they can make any day work for them. 
or they can make the Sabbath work the way they think it should work. I remember this young man who said to Jesus, um, asking what he must do to enter the kingdom of heaven. I remember in Matthew 19, Jesus said to him to keep the commandments. And he said he did it from his youth up. And he asked this smart question, what lack I yet? And Jesus said, okay, well, why don't you go sell all that you have and feed the poor? Remember how this young man felt? He walked away, he was very sad. He was very sad. Talking about putting the cart before the horse. Right? You want to make it. And um, you could not see a little sacrifice. A little sacrifice. Um, and sometimes these are some of the things that stand in our way. Wealth, opportunity, um, our jobs. Uh, and we try to juggle it and make it work. Um, but Jesus, what Jesus said was, um, go help. And you know, just, you did all these things, that's great. Um, you could be a good tool, but we can work with you. Just a one challenge. And he could not do it. Could not do it. Could not work with Jesus anymore. But Paul did. You know? Here's a man who um, persecuted the church on his way to Damascus. He was called from heaven. Jesus met him. And um, I read verse 9 of Acts chapter, verse 6 of Acts chapter 9 um, to you. And he trembled and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me do? I like that question. Right? He is looking for some structure, some, some rules that he should follow. Right? The Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. See? If you read the rest of the verses, you probably know the story very well. Um, Paul asked what to do. And Paul was sent to a man called Ananias. And Paul was baptized. He had hands laid on him. Then he received his sight again. See? There were rules in place. So he was sent to this guy. And he was told what to do. And Paul did not go and become an independent and walk on his own, establish his own church. He walked with a, a system that was in place already, a church that was established by Jesus himself. He did not make up his own roads, as so many do today. And so, I will read this verse quickly to you again. Um, in chapter 15 of Acts, and certain men which came down from Jerusalem taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after this manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about the question. They weren't operating as independents. They were following the rules. And they went to Jerusalem and they met with the other apostles and discussed the matter. It is so important to follow the rules, my brethren. So important. God will bless us. God will be with us. And if we don't, or you don't want to walk, um, God can raise children, as he did with Samuel. He had a message for Eli, he raised up Samuel. God raised up Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, Oh Lord, I cannot speak. I'm a child. The Lord said, Say not that thou art a child. You will say only what I have you to say. Jeremiah went on to be a great prophet, right? Daniel, Isaiah, Samuel went on to be a great prophet. 
great leader because these were men who followed the rules. Rules are a place for us to follow further. Let us continue to abide by these if we should all inherit eternal life as we all see. God bless you. Amen.